This video is going to be controversial. Greetings. Get ready to embark on an extraordinary journey, exploring the world of Docsh, to install in your Proxmox server. We get to install the newest alternative to Portainer fresh off the press. You will not believe what new features Docsh has. Docsh is better at stack management than Portainer, and has features not found in Portainer. It is going to be a program that you will not be able to work without. A Docker dashboard and a Docker IDE. At the end of this video, you are going to find something valuable and exclusive to our channel. We will show you how to say goodbye to Portainer. So, buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the brilliance of this video. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to our Proxmox expert, Nico. Please note that Nico has a charming Dodecanese European accent, but fear not he speaks the Queen's English fluently. Over to you, Nico. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. We have a great program that we are going to look at, and it has an interesting name. The developer has recommended that we pronounce this program like Dodge, so we will call it Dodge. It gives the name a Brazilian twist. Our instructions for this video can be found in our blog. We will provide a link to our blog down below. Docs gives us four main features. Firstly, it gives us a very nice looking dashboard where you can see what's up, what's down, and what has not been launched in active. So I have something here in active. Secondly, Docs gives us an ability to convert the Docker run command into a Docker compose file. Let's do that. So I've put in a docker run command in here and hit the convert and now I have a docker compose file. Secondly, it gives us a file editor where we can manage docker compose file. You click this button. By default, they give us nginx. So we can paste our own docker compose file there and it also gives us a feature of an environment variable. Let's say you have a password in your docker compose file. So let's put in a password here. So you create a variable by clicking this and we'll call it password. The password will be saved in the .env file, the environment file which is a good idea. You never want to put passwords in your Docker Compose files. So this is excellent. And then you could give this thing a name. I'm just going to call it Uptime and Save. Of course, there would be a problem because this Docker Compose file doesn't take a password. So let's fix that. Save. Perfect. And now we have Uptime here. The third feature it gives us, we can take an existing container and we can edit the compose file. To do that, we click on the container, we click on edit, and now we can edit the container. And when we are done, we can then save. If you want, you can update it. And now we can start it. In addition to that, we get a bash to the containers. You can see that this is the ultimate Docker Compose IDE. So let's see who am I. I should be root. And let's go back to home. As you can see, this is going to be a tool that you're not going to want to live without. Now that we've had a quick taste of Docs, let's learn more about it. Docs was written by the developer as an alternative to Portana, as there were certain features he wanted that Portana was not providing him. This is what the developer had to say. I have been using Portana for some time, but for the stack management, I am sometimes not satisfied with it. For example, Sometimes when I try to deploy a stack, the loading icon keeps spinning for a few minutes without progress. 
and sometimes the error messages are not clear. To develop with ES module and TypeScript, originally I planned to use Demo or Bun.js, but they don't have support for ARM64, so I stepped back to Node.js. Docs is a coinage of a word I created myself. I originally hoped it would sound something like Dodge. Dodge? Dodge. Many people call it Dockage. It is also acceptable. The name idea came from a twitch of emotives such as Sage, Veg, Workage. They all end in GE. So let's pronounce this as Dodge, giving it a Brazilian twist. I'm not going to go through the features. We have seen the features demonstrated. Let's now go straight and do the deployment. Please refer to this page. To save time, I'm going to do this installation without looking at this page. I've created a VM called Docs, which I have started. And I will open a terminal session to that. You need to be root sudo su dash we need to create two folders this command will create them both and then we need to go into the stacks folders cd now we're in the stacks folder we will now run a call command And let's see what we got. There it is. We can now edit the compose file if we want to customize it. We need to install nano. Run this command. Let's clear the screen. We want to use docker compose app dash d so that it starts the container in detached mode. As it's a new installation, it had to pull down and start. Good, it started. Let's use the docker ps command. This will show us what's running in docker. And there it is. Clear the screen. We need to check our IP. IP-A. It should be 130. There it is. We need this. Copy this. And what you have here, we're going to replace with that. Let's open up a notepad. This is the URL the container created. Copy it. Open the browser. And we now have a new account that we are creating. The first time you do this, it will create the administrator account. I like to call it admin and give it a suitable password. Repeat the password and create. Hopefully my password is identical. And I'm in. You could save the password. There we are. And with that, we've done our installation and we've demonstrated how you can use it. Now that we have completed our installation and we have got Docs working, there is something we need to show you that makes this so important for managing your containers. You may remember we created this folder OPT Stacks earlier. Now we will show you what Docs does with this folder. Can you see we have our Docker stack here, all the containers with Docker Compose files that we manage on our server 
in one central place. This is most valuable, and I'll tell you why. I have colleagues that have either damaged Docker Compose files or lost Docker Compose files because they did not put the source code into source control. Two videos ago, we created a video where we showed you how to self-host Git T. You want to do that. In fact, you want to watch that video so that you can create your own Git repository to back up these files. As a feature of our channel, we have published this into GitHub. So there's our stack in GitHub. Let's open one of these folders to see what you get. You get the compose file, you get the environment file, and we added a readme file. This is something you should do. You add a readme file so that later when you want to reinstall this, You've got all the information now to do that. We trust you found this extremely useful. Please give us a like. Please subscribe to our channel so that we can reach our target. And with that, over to you, Josh. Thank you for watching this video, exploring the world of Docsh, to install in your Proxmox server. We trust you found our Git repository useful and as an example of what you should host in your Git T server. If you have not watched our video on Git T, please do. So, we got to install the newest alternative to Portainer fresh off the press. We did not believe what new features Docsh gave us. Docsh is better at stack management than Portainer, and has features not found in Portainer. It is going to be a program that you will not be able to work without. A Docker dashboard and a Docker IDE. Now it is time to say goodbye to Portainer. If you have not given us a like, please do so. Your dedication to exploring Proxmox's capabilities is invaluable. Stay tuned for more insights, automation, and empowerment through its incredible tools for your home lab. Please like and comment to share your feedback and suggestions for our channel. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest content and tutorials, ensuring you never miss out on informative videos. Your support is crucial for our channel's growth. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, consider becoming a Patreon supporter for exclusive access to upcoming training courses, enriching your expertise, and supporting the channel. We genuinely appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more enriching content with you. Stay curious, keep exploring, and continue harnessing Proxmox's remarkable potential in your home lab and DevOps journey. Thank you for being part of our community.